Hello and welcome to Screwfix Live. We're here all week. We're live at five in association with the EFL. We have a fantastic lineup for you, a week packed with EFL guests, our Product of the Year awards and some great giveaways. So make sure you stay tuned for all of that. We're also giving you a chance to win over £2,000 worth of DeWalt tools. All you have to do is enter your details on the form below on screwfix.com to be in with a chance to win. Now, all day you've been sending us your questions for today's guest, who is the former Aston Villa and England midfielder, Lee Hendry. You've been using the hashtag SFLiveLee with all your questions, and we'll be chatting with him very shortly. And we've got a couple of brilliant screw fix challenges for him, which are going to be highly entertaining. Trust me, it involves ping pong balls and a screw fix catalogue. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> Now, we've been traveling the country, visiting our stores. We've been challenging plumbers and electricians in a penalty shootout challenge called Back of the Net. You've been showing us your skills from the spot at those stores. And we're going to have a winner every single day. And then the overall winner will be announced at the end of the week. So if you want to join in, tell us who you think is likely to be better at shooting penalties, whether it's going to be plumbers or electricians using the hashtag SF Live Plumbers if you think they're going to win, or SF Live Electricians if you think they will get the upper hand. We'll be selecting five winners at random to win today's top product of the year. So make sure you don't miss that. Now let's crack on. I would now like to introduce you to today's guest. It is the former Aston Villa and England midfielder, Lee Hendry. Hello, Lee. Hello, how are you doing? You okay? Not bad, thank you. You've got a few pre-match nerves, I would imagine, before your beloved Aston Villa play at Fulham tonight. So it's good to have you with us <laughs> at this very nervous bit time. <laughs> very boss <bustle> fire <laughs> at the moment, few. really am. For lots and lots of reasons. Oh, are you? I bet you're a bit yeah. nervous about the ping pong challenge, aren't you? As well as the, that's, the that's catalog. That's the main one. The cat <laughs> Honestly, this is hard, man. This is hard. We'll come to that in just a few minutes. <laughs> but first of all, we've got a few questions for you. Are you ready for this? This might be harder than the catalogue challenge, by the way. I'm all ready. Right. Let's start with the Q&A. We've had a load of tweets in today. Rich on Twitter. This should be fairly quite straightforward, actually. Who was the best player that you played with at the Villa? Uh, I always say, um, I, I always look at centre forwards for me because obviously they're playing in front of me and I like to be a little bit inventive and creative when I'm playing in that midfield role. But I love playing with Dwight York. He was literally one of the best players I've ever played with. Um, he, he was great to go and link in, play with. Uh, excellent first touch and he'd always try and bring me back into play. He was, he was such an inventive and creative strong player that scored a lot of goals for Villa and, and moved on to Manchester United and I was very fortunate to play with him. So, Yorkie stands out a million miles for me in my career. And you've also been asked who was most fun around the training ground. I would imagine Dwight York might come into that category, but there are probably a few <laughs> others as well. Yeah, well, I mean, apart from myself, obviously, because I'm a, a fun, loving kind of guy. Um, I don't <laughs> want to blow my own trumpet. <laughs> but um, yeah. no, I mean, I, I was actually, um, I mean, Peter Crouch was, was, I was with him actually last week. And he always, I mean, he was life and soul of the changing room, not only for his banter and his fun ways, but just when he walked into the changing room, you know, he had to duck through the, the changing room doors. Everywhere he went, he had to duck down because he was so tall. So he, he was just literally the biggest character in the changing room for me uh, in my sort of era and playing at them, them times. Yeah, because I'm not sure his personality has necessarily come out while he was a player so much. We didn't really get to see that side of him so much. But now, post-footballing career, and now he's a pundit, he's absolutely flying, isn't he? He's hilarious. Yeah, he really is. But that's that was Crouchy. He's always been like that. Um, obviously, people have not took him serious enough, and now, and you know, he, he's he's gone on to have a, a fantastic career. Retired now, um, and like you said, working in the world of media, which I feel that like everyone's getting to see what I seen in the change room when he was at Villa, because he's the funniest guy that I've been around. Believe me. Yeah, Ryan on Twitter. I don't know how you're going to like this one, but how do you feel oh. about your son being a mad Wolves fan? Huge respect uh. to you, he says, for taking <laughs> him to the Molyneux. But that's got to be well, killing you, right? Oh, let me tell you, honestly, I've thought about putting him in the shed uh, with all the the, uh, the garden tools and stuff like that. I've tried everything to put a claret and blue shirt on his back, but is he having it? No. And do you know something? 
I love the fact that he's he's chose his own club. I haven't had to force him to put a Villa shirt on. Um, and the other thing is, he's not put a blue shirt on, which could be a hell of a lot worse than a Wolf shirt. So, in theory, I'm sort of balancing it out and going to watch it, going to watch the Wolves with him. I, you know, I, I find that was such a big thing for him because I thought, you know what, am I ever going to get to go to the Wolves? Maybe not. And I, I was more scared myself, to be honest, but only because the fact that little Harley had his Wolves hat on, gloves, he was literally loaded up with the Wolves. <laughs> stuff. And I thought, are the Wolves fans going to take me walking through the streets? Um, but they were absolutely magnificent, welcomed me well, and listen, he's my son, and at the end of the day, I'm not going to force him to do anything. He's made his own choices. Yeah, from what I've seen in the Wolves fraternity, they have full respect to you for doing that, by the way. They do. Uh, they think it's highly entertaining, obviously. And it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's brilliant for them. But well done you. I, it would kill me. It would kill me for my kids to support a rival, but never mind. We've got that battle going on at the moment, but I won't go into details. Um, more questions for you. Who's the best manager you've worked under and what made them so special? Um, John Gregory, uh, Aston Villa, obviously. I spent a lot of, obviously, most of my career at, at Villa, which everybody knows, um, before having a number of clubs leaving. But um, John Gregory was brilliant for me. You know, he came back in after working with me as in the reserves and, and, and doing that sort of side of it and really pushing me as a youngster. Um and come straight back to Villa and, and literally didn't even think about it, put me straight in the team. And before I knew it, I was playing away at Atletico Madrid in the UEFA Cup. You know, I was only a young man, 18, 19. And he gave me my he gave me my breakthrough. Brian Little gave me my debut. But I just love the fact that John was he was one of them guys. He was almost like a, a sort of dad role, if you get what I mean. He put his arm around, but he'd always always give me a kick up the backside if he thought I was sort of not towing the line and I felt like I owed a lot to him when he was at the club. And, you know, when you've got a manager that believes in you, you know, it gives you that confidence. And I feel that he, for me, out of all the managers that I've been under, he was one that really pushed me and, and guided me to, to go and play for my country, even though it was only the one cap. So lots of credit to John. And I loved working under and I loved his philosophy and his training styles. OK, John Gregory it is. Uh, you made the transition from player to pundit and you're on punditry duty today, of course. Did you take any training when you went into punditry or did you just dive straight in, two-footed and give it your best shot and try to improve from there? Well, uh, that's it's so crazy because I literally went in two-footed, no training, no media stuff. And, and, and that's where I was very, well, I seen the world of media to a different aspect. Um, you know, a lot of people do go down the coaching roles, which I did do my, my sort of academy stuff and didn't really feel that I, was, I wanted to go down that route. But once I got into the media, I've done no media training at all. And, and I think, you know, for most people that, that think that the guys on the TV that go through that, it's not always about that. They like to see your genuine view on the game. They like to see your football knowledge because that's what, you know, us ex-footballers are there for. You know, we're there to see things that maybe not the fans see and the bigger picture of it all. And I've, I've learned a lot off a lot of people since I've been in and I've worked damn hard to, to try and get to, to where I am, which I always say you work hard, you get rewarded. And I, I do a lot of prep for games, you know, because there's, there's some games I have to look at League Two, which is really difficult to do because League Two is not on the TV. Um, so it's, it's a lot of prep. But you know what? It's the second best thing that I'm going to get to ever playing football. And I, I get them nerves going into a game like I used to when I was playing football. So, you know, that means that I've got my head on the game and I love it and I want to improve every time I'm doing the media stuff. And do you do what the likes of Danny Higginbotham does, which really impressed me when he made the switch <laughs> from playing to punditry, which is he phones people up? Because obviously as an ex-player, yeah. you've got all those contacts or you know someone who knows someone who knows someone. If you're doing a game, then you can phone somebody in the week ahead of a game and get the inside trap. Because I tell you, we presenters absolutely love it when you pun it bring <laughs> something extra like that. A little nugget or inside track for us. Well, that, well, that's the other thing is that you, you have to go back to, who, who you know, players that you've played with, players you've played against, managers that you've been, uh, you know, in and around. And it's one thing that, that learning off the likes of Danny uh, Andy Hinchcliffe, Scott Minto, lots of pl uh, people that have been in the game of football have told me that's the direction to go. And I, I do that, you know, I've, I've spoke to uh, Michael Flynn, I'm doing the Newport, Newcastle game and 
you know, we don't get to see a lot of Newport, but Flinney's given me a lot of advice. He's given me a few little, like you said, the little nuggets that uh, we need going into to live, live games because it's important that some of them guys that don't get the exposure do. Um, and that's, you know, that's the, the flip side of it, that you get to speak to guys and managers and you get to you get to get the little insights of what they've been up to. And, and sometimes you get the team news, which is not always because managers are, are, are very cynical in what they give out at times. Oh, we love it when you bring us team news. That is absolutely the best. I keep <laughs> doing that. Oh, we had a question about, about the championship. And this is a fascinating one because when you look at the other leagues around Europe, the championship is so highly competitive. And you look at the wages as well and the crowds, obviously, pre-lockdown. Where would you rate the championship as a division in terms of all those leagues around Europe? Oh, it's, that's a, uh, do you know what? That is a very good question because working in the AFL and doing the championship stuff, I've got to say, it is one of the best leagues. I mean, I think this season, um, you know, lots of the so-called bigger clubs have, have gone back into the Premier League, which sometimes flips differently. And, you know, when you've got the likes of uh, a Villa in there, Fulham, who obviously have gone up. And, I mean, this year we've got the likes of Watford and, and Bournemouth. It, I, I think it's a very, very good league. You know, I, I can't say it's as close to, to sort of the Premier League and, I mean, I, I love La Liga. I think it's very good, the French League. But it's certainly up there with, with in the top five for me um, because I feel that there's so much competition. There's so many big players that are coming through. Now we're seeing players coming from the Championship going and playing in Premier League football and also Championship players going abroad. We've seen Jude Bellingham go over to Germany and, and, and stake a claim out there. So it just shows that how big... The championship really is, and I've got to say, it's one of the most exciting leagues, I feel, uh, in, all, in all leagues, in all categories. Finally, an extremely important highbrow question from Rachel. She wants to know, what's his and yours favourite ever animation film? Oh, wow. Um, I'll probably have to say, <laughs> that's a very, very good question. Um I've got to probably say, if I'm being honest, I'd have to throw maybe something like Shrek out there. Would that would that be okay? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm Only struggling. Because, I'm thinking Watership I'd, Down, but that that's well, going back I, a bit. I, I know. Well, I, I'm I'm I mean that I'd have to go for like the cartoonish sort of style, which uh, you know, I, 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 obviously my children lo love watching, but. I'm not really into the sort of animation stuff. I'm into like the true stories and stuff like that. The uh, the more documented things that I can relate to. I'm absolutely with you, Lee. But um, <laughs> I would have said Frozen, but we've got to let it go. Oh, it's Frozen, just an absolute killer, isn't it? That? <laughs> just nonstop, nonstop. I've, I've only ever heard that ever since. Um, right. Thank you for your answers. Thank you. Now, that is the questions from the viewers, but we're going to challenge our guests every day. You know what's coming next, don't you? I do, I do. <laughs> you know what's coming? <laughs> we're challenging our football guests every day with how familiar they are with the Screwfix catalogue. Right, there are 33,000 Screwfix products listed in here. And I know you've been swatting up all week, haven't you, to find out exactly where they are. But you are going to be our very first ever contestant. <laughs> no one's ever done this before. In the Catalogue Champions Cup. Oh, my word. Righty-ho, you have got 90 seconds to find as many products on the list that I'm about to read you as you possibly can. So you just have to shout out one of the page numbers. So if it's page 200 to 210, if you say 203, that's fine, right? But okay. it's really hard. I had a go with my little girl yesterday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't want to scare you, but it took ages to find one. Okay. So you can either have a look at the, um, the glossary there, or you can dive yeah, straight that's... in and just have a quick flick. And if you're okay. really, really struggling, say pass and we'll go on to the next one. Ready? 90 right. seconds. Starts now. Paintbrush. This is so hard, by the way. This is... Oh. I've had that, I've had that. I know. Um, That's why I'm enjoying it so much. Pass. Gloves. What was that? Gloves. Look in the index. I've just seen it. I've just, I know, I've, just, I've just seen them then. I've just seen them. They've just passed by my... Uh, this is solid, by the way. This is solid. Uh, Does that mean hard? Yes, yeah. uh, yeah, very hard, yeah. Oh, no, I've just seen that. 
Go on, pass. Okay, boiler. This is on lots of pages. You've just got to name all the pages that it's on. There are boilers on loads of pages. Can I have a little guess at it? Have... Yeah, you, you can do what you know? like. No, timber deck screws. Uh, Quite hard, it's only on two pages in the whole. Five months. This is absolutely solid, by the way. Um, I'm enjoying this so much. Yeah, I'm I can imagine enjoy you your pain, but it is highly pass, pass. entertaining. I need to get one. Radiator. Yeah. Screwdriver. Screwdriver. You've got to find a screwdriver. You're nearly out. Uh, no, uh, 800. <sighs> nearly. Time's up. Oh, my God, you were so close. It was 805 to 809. Oh, my God. No. You were so close. You were almost... Hang on, if I go 800... If I go 800, then you're very close to the screwdriver department. Oh, no, I've just but looking at it now. Pli you're on pliers. That has pliers. hurt me. That has hurt me, that has. I mean, I don't want to rub it Zero. in. I would give you the leaderboard now because whilst none of our other guests for the rest of this week have competed yet, <laughs> they, have, they, have got, they have got the same number of points as you have. Which is uh -uh. Wow, so bad luck, bad luck. But oh, well. this next one, I think you're going to fare a little bit better at. There we go, dear oh dear. Yeah. Paul Dickoff, Dean Windass, Danny Cowley, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank. Oh. We'll be seeing if they can do even better than you later on this week. Now, the next challenge is going to be fun. We like to call it the Screw Fix T Pong challenge. So, we're going to test your hand eye coordination in this one. Were you oh, ever yes. any good as a goalkeeper when you used to go? Were you? No, no good at all. I hated holding balls. No, I'm not a goalkeeper, no. Really? Wayne Rooney, <laughs> Robbie Savage were pretty decent in goal, but you weren't. Never mind. Let's have a look to see if you can get six ping pong balls into one of our six screw fix cups. Well, that was the idea, Lee. <laughs> that was the idea to try with six <laughs> ping pong balls, which you were sent. Six screw fix cups, which you were sent as well. Now, if anybody watching online wants to have a little crack yourselves, if you've got a ping pong ball or some kind of little ball around the house, try and get them into six cups while we're doing this or afterwards. And then you can record your effort and send it to us using the hashtag SFLive2020. That's hashtag SFLive2020. Send them to us and we might well play them in later on this week. So let's have a look, Lee, at how you did. <laughs> Here goes. <laughs> Okay, now talk us through the thought process here. You went for the bounce, I see. Oh, excellent. You got one? Yeah. There's one. Two. Two? <laughs> You're doing all right. There's two. Hey. Oh, that was two. That's two. That's all right. I like your bouncing oh, technique yeah. here. Oh, the beans on toast. Off the beans on toast. <laughs> but yes. That's not bad, though. At least you got a couple on the board. Imagine if you'd bageled both of the, the the challenges that would have been a little unfortunate <laughs> yeah of course it would have <laughs> you managed to get a score of two so thank you for that that was good fun I'm only laughing because I haven't tried mine yet I've got to do mine this <laughs> week and put it online as well with a hashtag SF live 2020 so I mustn't laugh but you did um you did handicap yourself rather by only doing five ping pong balls what happened to the other one well I've got three young three young boys and they are absolutely carnage in the house. So I know that one's been taken out of the box and obviously that was me disadvantaged straight away. So and I'm I'm just uh, if I had to guess I think it was probably the uh, the 4 year old. Yes, I think you're probably right. I had to hide mine from my six-year-old. Bad luck. But you did all right. You got a couple. Tomorrow, it's Paul Dickoff's chance to have a go. So we'll see if he can fare any better than you. Well, next up, we've got our Product of the Year Awards. Paramount to Screwfix is quality, as well as their customers, of course. And each year, some excellent products come to market that really need celebrating. So they've managed to whittle down the products to the last five. But there is, of course, only one winner. And today's category is the Electrician's Product of the Year. Here are the nominees. Some fabulous products in there, but there will only be one winner, of course. So let's find out which product has won.
This is a message out to the Screwfix team and to all the customers at Screwfix. We at BG just want to say a big thank you for taking the time to actually go and vote for our product, the BG Weatherproof Socket. It's one for the second year running and we're absolutely happy about that. So thanks so much uh, for your votes. Now, I said earlier on in the show that we've been travelling the length and the breadth of the country, pitting electricians up against plumbers at our screw fix stores in our back of the net competition. You've been using the hashtag SFLivePlumbers and SFLiveElectricians based on whether you think plumbers or electricians are likely to win the penalty shootout. Let's have a look at how they got on. Today, it is the turn of Screwfix's local store to their HQ in Yeovil. Love it. Well done to the electricians who are the winners for today, Monday. But can they keep it up for the rest of the week? That is the question. We'll be back every day this week with winners, either electricians or plumbers, from our trip from around the country. We'll be picking five winners and we'll be contacting them shortly to send them out today's product of the year. That is the BG Outdoor Electrical Socket. That is it for today's show, but tomorrow between nine in the morning and four in the afternoon on screwfix.com, we will have a full day of product demonstrations. There'll be information from professional bodies and lunchtime Google garages, which is where you can go to see webinars designed to help you run your business more professionally. That is all here on Screwfix Live. Then we're live again at five in the afternoon with another guest. This time it will be the former Manchester City, Leicester City and Scotland striker Paul Dickoff. So you can get your questions into us now if you like, if you've got some to hand, using the hashtag SFLivePaul. That's SFLivePaul. More details can be found on our Facebook page. That is facebook.com forward slash screwfix and on the main website as well, which is, of course, screwfix.com, which you kind of know because you're on it right now. That is it from me. Thanks again to our guest for today, Lee Hendry. He didn't do so fair, so well with the catalogue, did he? But he did okay with the ping pong balls, getting in two out of five. We'll challenge our other guests every day this week. So make sure you join us for Live at Five. Thanks and bye. <laughs>